I'm Raj Kumar, President and Editor-in-Chief of DevX, here with Vanessa Carey in the uh, DevX studios here at our headquarters in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for being here, Vanessa. Thank you. It's great to be here. And Vanessa is uh, the founder and CEO of Seed Global Health, and we're here to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, so for those who don't know who are watching this, Seed Global Health, like many organizations, sends doctors and nurses, medical professionals from the West, from the U.S., from Europe, overseas, but you do something a little bit different. You had a unique insight when you created this startup just a couple of years ago now. Tell us what that insight was. What, what makes Seed Global Health different? So Seed Global Health sends doctors and nurses abroad to train, to build capacity and to really transfer skills. The idea is not to just plug a dam, but to actually rebuild the dam entirely. And we want our, what we want to do is make an investment in people that will be lasting. So the idea is that one of our doctors will train, let's say, 10 doctors. Mm -hmm. And each of those doctors will each go on to train 10 more and so on. So you actually get a force multiplication over years with the goal of actually building an entirely indigenous population of doctors and nurses that are able to run their own health system in their country for years to come. So this is, this is unique, but I imagine there's a lot of challenges to ramping up a training Focus program like this. So tell us how it actually works. Who do you who do you go train? Who do you partner with in the countries that you're in? How does it work? So we have a really unique partnership with the Peace Corps. Um, it's one of our flagship programs. We send doctors and nurses abroad as part of the Global Health Service Partnership. It's called. And what we've done is we've partnered with ministries of health, ministries of higher education in Tanzania, Malawi, and Uganda to help understand the training priorities of those countries because then there's really an ownership and a sense of of commitment from the countries as well where we're working. And they've guided us on what training institutions they wanted us to go to. We've gone to the training institutions and asked, you know, is this a partnership that you'd be interested in? Uh, we have 13 institutions this next year that we'll be working with. And they have helped guide the kinds of doctors and nurses they need to help fill in the gaps um, for training at their institution. And so it's been an amazing year uh, to see some of the impact our volunteers have had. We have one volunteer who within 24 hours of being at our site, help teach a life-saving procedure for uh, pregnant women. That she, in saving a mother's life, she not only helped that woman, but she taught her fellow counterparts how to perform that same procedure mm -hmm. so that you know, all women coming to that facility, even after our volunteers left, will be able to have their lives saved by this simple procedure that we know well here in the United States. We have another volunteer who's teaching in Southwestern Uganda who's a nurse, and nursing is often thought of as a third tier profession. Mm -hmm. And she has been teaching sort of the dignity and the uh, importance of nursing in her profession. And when she got her year-end evaluations, um, one of her students wrote, you've made me proud to be a nurse, and I will carry that spark forward with me you know, going mm -hmm. forward. And those small impacts, while they may not seem huge, yeah. that nurse is going to then give that to her students going forward. Sure. So that very slowly you're gonna see what has just started as a small spark is going to become a huge flame. But training takes time. It's a little bit messy. Yeah. But if we are really going to see our investments in health last for the long term, we need to ensure that we have uh, well-trained partners in the places working and enough of them to help expand the inputs, the investments, the aid that, we're, that we are putting in in these partnerships. There's an abundance of smart, doctors and nurses in these countries that are just lacking professional development opportunities. And that's why they're leaving in this, you know, that's why they'll emigrate from their country to go elsewhere. Nine of the top 20 countries with the highest rates of emigration mm -hmm. of skilled health professionals are in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. And they're all trying to go to the US, the UK, Australia, and when you consider Canada, when you consider that, the question is how do you rebuild those kinds of health training systems yeah. in the countries themselves? Because then, you know, that'll help stem the outflow of, of these, very brilliant health professionals that just want to be able to practice what they train in. Yeah, if you can create the opportunity locally, there's no need for them to emigrate. And it's also less expensive. 